I took the children to school on a Monday morning and then I started to get a headache. All my limbs started to wake. It was then that my mum called the ambulance. I remember looking down at my legs and I had all this mottled rash all over my legs. And I remember thinking, gosh, that's not good. I was pleading to a nurse, begging her to help me. I just heard this voice saying, don't worry, you're going to go to sleep now. And my first real memory was when my children came to see me for the very first time. And I remember them coming and they were allowed to brush my hair. And I stayed in hospital for four months. I lost my toes. I had partial hand amputation on my left. I lost my digits on my right. I had to learn to do everything for myself again. Cooking in the kitchen, I have to have different different utensils to help me. In every way you can imagine, it has, it has affected me. Emotionally, you're quite scarred from the psychological trauma that you've been through. And my husband, he was told that I had very little chance of survival and to bring the girls in to say goodbye. When I first came out of hospital, I didn't know anybody that had meningitis. I felt very alone until I looked at the Meningitis Now website and I read a lot of the personal stories. Had it not been for Meningitis Now, I think I still would have felt very, very alone. We've been to family days, which are fabulous. However, when I've been on those um, events, I've been the only adult. I think most of our support services are geared towards children, um, but we know that this isn't just a disease that affects babies and children. It affects adults too, and they consistently tell us that they'd like to see more age-appropriate services for them. The People's Project uh, funding would definitely enable us to support people like Jo who have suffered the impact of meningitis uh, emotionally, physically and sometimes financially too, giving them uh, an opportunity to meet other people who've been through similar circumstances and enable them to support each other. I went to a Rebuilding Futures Day with meningitis now, about a year after I had meningitis. I met um, a chap actually that had been on the same hospital ward and it was just so nice to share similar experiences. The chap that I was speaking to had had it three years previous, so I looked to him and I thought, that's where I will be. I will get there. I'm really looking forward to the Rebuilding Futures Day. Through the Befriending Service, I have met a lovely friend that lives in the southwest. She's a quadruple amputee, and I would love for her to be able to attend the event in Birmingham. It's obviously miles away from her home. I would hate to think that she would miss out. It'd be lovely for her to have a similar day nearer to her. The after effects of meningitis are for the long term. Uh, and they can be quite debilitating. And we'd like to provide support services to adults that gives them hope for the future and actually enables them to rebuild their futures. Although meningitis is a terrible disease, it doesn't mean that it's the end. Since coming out of hospital, I've learned to drive. I've gone back to work. I live a completely happy life with my two children and my husband. It's not, it's not the end. There is always hope out there.